Did you know that Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders are among the fastest growing groups in the United States? And their stories have been centuries in the making. Join me as we explore objects, many of which are rarely seen by the public, collected by the largest museum, education, and research center in the world, the Smithsonian Institution. Whoa, what is that? Together, we'll investigate the stories behind those objects and learn how these communities continue to shape U.S. history and culture. For generations, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiian artists in the U.S. music industry have been underrepresented. Barriers of systemic racism like the Chinese Exclusion Act and the World War II era incarceration of people of Japanese ancestry kept Asian Americans out of the limelight. Despite their prominence in certain genres, Asian Americans still face discrimination and racism. Although progress has been slow, artists of Asian descent are finding new ways to create their own space and representation in the music industry. Today, I'm meeting up with Tan Lu at the Entertainment Nation exhibit at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Tan is a collections manager, and she's gonna tell me about the museum's latest musical acquisition, which might surprise you. Welcome to Entertainment Nation. The objects displayed in this exhibit tell it's the story of U.S. history through the use of music, television, film, and sports. So a couple of objects that we have behind us, Steve Aoki's turntables, <laughs> and the other is Constance Wu's dress from Crazy Rich Asians, and we also have a new object here. Can you tell me a little bit about it? This is an album by Eric Nam, and it's titled is Before We Begin. Eric Nam is a Korean-American artist. He was born and raised in Atlanta. This album is special because it is his first mini album that is fully in English. And this album pretty much marks kind of the change in his music and his sound because he is Korean-American. So, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to sing in English is really impactful and significant because, you know, it's it kind of marks his breakout from beyond just K-pop and into, you know, global. What is the significance of acquiring this album for the museum? One of the big things that like the curators and I always talk about is like, you know, the story of the object as well as the person. And it's never just one story, there are multiple sides to the story. It's not only about Eric Nam's music journey, it's about his advocacy for mental health. The music industry is a hard world to be in and it's also highlighting that, you know, sometimes people struggle. Is mental health something that is commonly talked about within, you know, Asian American artists? In the Asian American community, as you know, there's a lot of stigma around it. So the fact that he, you know, uses his platform to raise awareness for it and talk about it, is, I think, is very impactful. Oh wow, that's incredible! What was the acquisition process like, and how did we obtain this object? After I was able to see Eric Nam perform, I reached out to one of the curators who I work closely with, Theo Gonzalez, and was just like, "Hey." Here's everything about Eric Nam. He's Korean American. Here is his story. I think it would be really interesting if we were able to bring something like this into our collection. So the museum has a vast collection of recorded music, and you know, bringing his album in helps tell that story. It, in no ways, tells the story because there's never the story. There are multiple stories. So you know, having this object in our collection now opens the gateway to you know, begin to tell more stories. Eric Nam's incredible journey is emblematic of the K-pop genre. So how did K-pop go from relative obscurity to a global phenomenon in less than two decades? There's no one better to answer that than Dr. Crystal Anderson. She teaches Korean studies at George Mason University and is the founder of KPK, K-pop Collective, an academic fan site devoted to K-pop. Crystal, it's so nice to meet you. Hi, it's really great to be here. Crystal, can you tell me about the historical roots of K-pop? Absolutely. So K-pop is a particular kind of Korean popular music that emerged in the early 1990s. It's very different from the Korean popular music that came before, mm -hmm. and it coincides with significant shifts in Korean culture itself. The move toward democratization mm -hmm. opens up South Korea to a lot more foreign influences. A lot of American and British music, genres like hip-hop and soul and pop that was popular at the time. You also have the development of a youth culture 
culture because now you don't have military rule that's oppressing mm -hmm. people um, in society. And that creates this almost incubator for the development of taking what works, mm -hmm. a lot of Western genres, and mixing that with Korean promotional and production strategies. And that's the little twist that makes it different. So there was a lot more room for creative freedom all of a sudden. Yes, that absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. How did K-pop become the global phenomenon that it is today? So we have K-pop fans in places like Saudi Arabia and the Netherlands and France, and we may not have large populations of Korean communities in those places. So how do we account for that? Right. That's the, the power of social media. Yeah. Social media took uh, South Korean popular culture to places that did not have large populations of um, actual Korean people. Why does music matter for identity in general? And what can music tell us about the way communities are formed and sustained? So music is a really interesting kind of cultural production. As K-pop has demonstrated, it's not dependent on language. And that's one of the things that's made it possible for K-pop to spread globally. Even though it's in Korean, um, the fans appreciate the Korean, but instead of it being a barrier, it is something that brings them together. And so that's really unique about K-pop. And when K-pop is the unifying factor, that means you get a very diverse fandom, and then you get a common set of cultural references um, that everybody understands. And people then start to use K-pop as a platform for other kinds of conversations or discussions or debates that maybe are more difficult to have outside that realm. You don't always need to understand the lyrics of a song to feel a connection to it. Aside from catchy beats, K-pop is more than just music. It's a language that brings us together. Eric Nam's journey to international stardom and the global rise of K-pop reminds us that music transcends borders. How are you using music to create a community around you?